All right, the Waiver Wire Show is here. We've got all the names you need to know that you can pick up that might be able to help your team this week. We talked through some of the dilemmas in the backfield of New England and in Green Bay with the injury to Aaron Jones and a whole lot more on today's show, including Smoke Fire. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the episode. If you've ever wanted to make your home feel safer, there's no better time than now. This week, our friends at Simply Safe are giving fantasy footballers listeners 40% off. That's too much, Mike. Forty. Look, I'm not in charge of that. It's, that's, too, it's too much. That's I'm not comfortable. What, that's what Simply Safe is is doing for the listeners right now. Their award winning home security, forty percent off. We love Simply Safe. We've used them to to protect our studio, our equipment for years. Brooks, of course, protects his infinite wealth with Simply Safe. They were named the best home security system of 2021 by U.S. News and World Report. You can easily customize a system for your home online in minutes and even get a free custom recommendation from Simply Safe. Like this is the these are the biggest discounts of the year. Like 40%. I mean, that's preposterous, but you can get a complete home security system starting at just over $100 and no long-term contracts. Take advantage of Simply Safe's holiday sale and get 40% off your new home security system by visiting simplysafe.com/footballers. Again, that's simplysafe.com slash footballers for 40% off your entire system. Hurry, this offer ends soon. And Foot Clan, don't forget, championship season is coming, so if you need a trophy, a ring, something to swag out. Oh! And- <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a fantasy jam. <laughs> yeah, head to fantasychamps.com. They have trophies, rings, and belts, and things to make you, uh, well, just better than everybody else. So check it out at fantasychamps.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, November 16th. My Christmas tree is up. Ho, 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 ho. Is that because it's Christmas season? That's right. Welcome. We've been waiting for you. Pretty excited about that. The kids were... Kids were happy. I know it's for some people, they get all bent out of shape if Thanksgiving turkey's not in their belly when they hang their tree. Oh, come on. Bah humbug. Now, was the music on whilst decorating the tree? It is a requirement to put on a Christmas record Mm -hmm. while you decorate the tree. The hot cocoa flowing. I was about to tell you we had hot cocoa. my man. I have already consumed uh, both Home Alones and... (laughs) And the uh, you ate them. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, and the new one. Oh, they have a it's new one. Out? There is a new one. Uh oh. Is it animated? No, it's it's some new movie. Okay, it's it's over there on the uh, the D plus. Hmm. Mm. Sounds eh, like a ringing look, endorsement. Here's what I'll say. It's there. It's there. <laughs> it's available for it's okay. consumption. It's, it's out now. Uh, no, it's it's a fun time of year. We got, what, week 11 now in the NFL season on the way. We got waivers on today's show. It's fun. It's a good time. My, my kids are now at the point where, like, the traditions, if you were to break from them. Oh, yes. In a little, it ruins everything. And we, see, I was a little concerned. We got a puppy. And so this is the first Christmas with the tree and the puppy combination. Mm. So I wasn't sure. I was like, don't put any of the the, the important uh, ornaments down low, yes. you know, where the, the pup. But he's fine. He's fine with it. That's good. Well, is he, did you get him a Santa hat? I haven't done that. Oh, come on. Is that part of the. Yes, get him in the spirit. I'm sorry. I, I just gave him, a, <laughs> gave him something to chew on. Uh, all right. Follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can check out our community, a bonus weekly show. You get to support this independent podcast. And uh, support Brooks. Support Brooks, who who needs it. Oh, big um, time. He's thanks, des- guys. He's destitute. He is. Uh, this has been a lie, a ruse. He is uh, pretty broke. Well, look, it's supporting Brooks is like buying stuff off of Amazon. Bezos don't need the money, but we, st- <laughs> we still, I still buy stuff off of Amazon. <laughs> <We> still-, <laughs> still support him. <laughs> uh, and he keeps just heading off into space <laughs> with your money. <laughs> Uh, join the foot.com if you want to come check out the community and the websites, the fantasyfootballers.com. 
Recapping last night's game. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah. Flow charts in the NFL don't make sense. This team beats that team. That team beats this team. Oh, man. Uh, the 49ers came out. Uh, they smashed the Rams. And as they have done in yeah. the last, the, I believe this is five games in a row where the San Francisco 49ers have beaten the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, so uh, Shanahan has McVay's number at this point and I mean his phone number he calls him he yes. says what's up Do you see that and then he hangs up on him so use your refrigerator running uh <laughs> two bad games in a row for the Rams and Matthew Stafford has not been good for fantasy for two straight weeks couple interceptions again got the team uh off to a bad start one wasn't his fault one was Tyler Higby's fault yes and there were drops that the team oh drops a plenty I mean I'm at this point I'm Wondering if Odell Beckham showed up at the studio, would this podcast make it through the week? I mean, I I don't know what would happen. He, he shows up, and maybe Robert Woods kind of matters to this offense. Yes, he he certainly seemed to be missing. When it was the time for the, the chain mover, the possession, the, the little short, you know, I need six yards here to keep this drive alive, Robert Woods wasn't there, and you replaced him with a has-been. And so it was... Um, he was barely on the field. No, I, I, I know. Uh, but it is fun to just envision Odell Beckham somehow arriving and ruining the high-powered offense of the Rams. Well, the 49ers moved to 4-5. and five. Jimmy Garoppolo was efficient, 15 for 19, 182 and 2. Debo Samuel was dominant in all oh phases of the game. Is this guy. Uh, 27 carries for Elijah Mitchell. You actually saw Jeff Wilson for 10 carries, change of pace guy this week. Yeah, I, th I think you would have seen Jeff Wilson significantly more if, you know, he's like their third down guy. He's their pass catching, you know, we got to catch up type of player. Listening to Kyle Shanahan talk um, earlier this week, we expected Jeff Wilson to be involved as the third down back. You don't need that as much when you are winning, which is how Elijah Mitchell gets 27 carries in the game and and to go back to Debo real quick Debo you've converted me he did he, he, oh, it, fully it, conversion. All, full it, conversion all it took was uh I couldn't do it you know it took Debo to do it all all it took was a player to have more receiving yards through eight games than than Jerry Rice it's it got gotcha. you it's <laughs> unbelievable like, man mm, okay. I don't know the Steebo guy seems like he's going places. Has, has has anyone ever been this good at yak? Ever like consist? P Percy Harvin had like some games, but Debo is just untackleable. I don't understand you. And it doesn't matter where he gets the ball. If right. he gets it behind the line of scrimmage and does not have a head of steam, you cannot tackle him. But if he gets it out like and you smash him while he catches the ball, you fall down. He stands up and he keeps running. He's he's. Hit that button again, man. <laughs> this dude's unstoppable. I don't think it's unreasonable to say that if he was made the full-time running back, he'd be better than anybody they had. Agreed. Oh, yeah. I think that would actually happen. But, but he's their best wide receiver, so you can't well. do that. Yeah, he, he's – he's his yak is not just uh, shimmy, shimmy and shake. It's hit you in the mouth. It's mm -hmm. his shoulder balance, and you fall over. His balance is unbelievable. Like, there, I, there was one catch – in particular, where it was full, it was the bang bang catch. Where it's normally like, if the wide receiver simply catches the ball, you're like, that was a great mm -hmm. play. But no, he not only does he catch the ball, but he just, he doesn't even like, he doesn't even go off kilter. He just lands and then he and he goes. And the, the defender is left in a pile of dust. I would like to, I'd like it known that I would be alone in first place in our league of record if it was not for the fact. Oh my gosh! Al Borland went into last night's game. He had <laughs> yes. Debo Samuel. His opponent had Matthew Stafford and the Rams defense. What What and was he, the he point won differential? By Twelve. What was the point differential going into? He the was game? down by two points. He was He wasn't up. He was down. He needed Debo to outscore the quarterback and the defense. And he did it by a lot. Oh, fantasy is fun. Are we worried about Daryl Henderson at this point? Only five attempts in this game, 11 last week, outside the top 36. So he's not even a, a running back three for two consecutive weeks. Green Bay on the horizon after the bye week. The question here is, are you worried about the Rams offense? Because I'm not worried about Daryl Henderson um, at all. I'm, But if the Rams offense is 
you know, looking putrid and not moving the ball and not scoring points, obviously the running back is not going to be as valuable. When they are down and he only gets five carries in the game because they're just airing it out and they feel the need to not just dink and dunk, but like, we've got to get it all back now, um, that's a problem. So when I think about the Los Angeles Rams, despite two bad performances in a row from Matthew Stafford, it's similar to um, Patrick Mahomes we've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. No, I'm going to I'm going to trust the offensive head coach, the good quarterback, the high-powered offense we've seen a lot and so here in the Rams, I'm trusting in the Rams, in which case I'm fine with Daryl Henderson. Um and the Daryl Henderson manager might not be. So it might be worth kicking the tires see if you can acquire him on the cheap. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. The the next three matchups are uh, well, I mean one against Jacksonville, but Green Bay and Arizona, that's tough, but his 15 through 17, so those playoff weeks, they're not they are not negative matchups, and that's, couple on the road, Minnesota, Baltimore. Yeah, but I mean, as far as fantasy points, you know, Seattle before that, Minnesota, and they're they're all giving up over twenty two points a game to the fantasy running back position. So that's if you can sneak him for cheap right now, I would absolutely do that. That you look like a man about to talk. The only <laughs> the only last thing I want to say is is I I feel like I was disappointed in Cooper Cup. How could you be? What? That's what's incredible. What? He was 11 for 122. Is that because he didn't score? Yeah, he didn't. It, like, this is that because you have a bet on him scoring more touchdowns <laughs> than any other wide receiver in football? That's, I'm sure that's in my heart somewhere. Um, but no, I, I, my point is just this is the standard he has set for himself. That 11 for 122 is ho-hum. <laughs> is like, okay, I, I really was hoping for more. But he's, he's just, he's great. Good Agre job, Cooper Cup. Agreed. He's, he's a very good wide receiver, and when the going gets tough, he hyper-targets Cooper Cup. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Presented by Traeger Grills. All right, two players will feature on today's Where There's Smoke, There's Fire. Both players have had two consecutive impressive week so this is very much the NBA jam rules are they on fire uh, a lot of smoke in the air number one Devonta Smith Devonte Smith he's very good number Rookie two number wide five. receiver for the Philadelphia Eagles second <laughs> uh, just in case you're yeah. unfamiliar here in yeah week I mean 11. in week 11 sure um <laughs> yeah so uh against the Chargers against um the Broncos, two good defenses, might I add, like passing defenses. Mm -hmm. You usually run on those teams, don't pass that well. Two top five fantasy uh, producing weeks. He's been great, but both of them were hyper efficient. Only six targets each game. He's not one of those guys on pace for 100 receptions, um, you know, PPR machine. Scored both weeks, obviously. The weeks before were not great, 90th at the wide receiver position against Detroit, which oh, is yeah. a smash matchup you expected him to be great in. Um, Same with Tampa Bay, a smash matchup for the passing game. You expect him to be great. He was, you know, he, he was 4.1 fantasy points that week. His usage is <laughs> extremely good. You know, over the last month, he's seeing 28% of the targets. Now we have, uh, we have a small pie. Small passing pie situation going on in Philadelphia, but at least he is the main guy. His his share of the air yards, you know, hitting on those big plays, it's very high. Over the last month, yeah, like Pro Football Focus, if you uh, uh, like their numbers, he is their highest graded wide receiver over the last month. He is he's playing extremely well, and I mean, it's, nice playoff schedule. Yes, in a very yeah, we've highlighted the Eagles' playoff schedule a few times. Is it Washington twice? Yes. Is that what's in there? So he is. He's a very interesting player moving forward. I'm not sure that this is like fire. I'm. He's locked in as a top twelve option every single week. The variance for him because of the small pie and being a rookie, the variance is wide receiver ninety on the week. But not many guys can hit a back to back top five week. So I'm. I will call this fire. Yeah, I'm I'm fire on this as well. Uh, fire in the sense that not obviously not that he's going to be you know a, a top five guy on a weekly basis, but fire that he's in my lineup. Uh, fire that he should be started um, in just about every matchup unless you've got unbelievable stud wide receivers. Great, but in a general lineup 
the average team. I think Devonta Smith should be started rest of season. He's on a 17-game pace of over 1,000 receiving yards as a rookie, um, and you usually see those rookie wide receivers who are good better the second half of the year. So I'm, I'm in. I believe it. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I actually don't see him and Jamar Chase very different in the in the connection between the quarterback and the wide receiver where, um, you know, the big plays down the field, that's Devontae Smith. Around the end zone, he's been looking to Devontae Smith on these targets. They haven't always connected, but, you know, we say this, a quarterback, part of the getting better as a real-life quarterback for Jalen Hurts has been looking to Devontae Smith to make a play and not Jalen Rager, and not oh Quez God. Watkins, Jalen, and not Dallas Goddard even. I know this is the Devontae Smith section of the show, but holy crap, how disappointing is Jalen Rager? Well, at least they couldn't. I mean, they. oh, wait, they could have just drafted Justin Jefferson. No. Oh, yeah, they did. They passed on Jefferson. Yes, they did. He went in the very next. Oh, that, was, sorry, that was a bit of a <laughs> – it was meant to be a joke. I stumbled through oh, it. But, man. yeah, they could have taken Justin Jefferson. Yeah, that one doesn't. Can feel we zoom good. up on Mike's uh, you want this? Uh, reaction face? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's. Oh my gosh! But that, they, I saw the video when they drafted Rager. There was a lot of high fives. Yeah, that's a fireable offense. <laughs> I I liked Rager. Um, I I'm surprised. <laughs> so did the Eagles? Well, sure. So did the Eagles. I'm I'm surprised at how <laughs> meaningless he has been for them, and it oh, really does that feel. Is the saddest thing you can say about. Someone. Yeah, I mean he he's not a needle mover. He has not helped this franchise at all. Um, and he's had enough time to really show his stuff. He's a serviceable wide receiver three for an NFL team that should have a contract. That, but, but like, you don't care about those. So guys. just to be clear, Traeger over Rager. Oh yeah. Oh goodness, Traeger's a plus. All right, Elijah Moore, smoke fire. Uh, this one's tough. I think yeah, it is. When you look at him compared to because he finished number one overall against Indy. 19 last week, had the late touchdown, only oh, three for was, 44. It was garbage. <laughs> but, you know, you look at the, the numbers for the aforementioned Devontae Smith, 12 targets, nine catches, three touchdowns. You go look at Elijah Moore in the last two weeks, it's 14 targets, it's 10 catches, it's three touchdowns. So I I want to say smoke. So you, if either of you are fire, you need to convince me because – it's about predictability in the offense, confidence at the quarterback position, transitioning quarterback. But at the same time, that's a lot of targets, and that's a lot of action for a player that is uh, that flashed in preseason. You got four weeks inside the top 36 in a row. Like maybe they're just scheming more targets his way. He started the season a little bit banged up. They waited until after the bye. He's been more involved. Like you said, four weeks uh, top 36 at wide receiver. He is getting targeted on 23% of his routes run, which is a really a good, good number. predictable number, and he is very talented. Elijah Moore is one of those, you know, burst players with that quick twitch where he can get the ball, make a man miss, and and take it to the house. So there's a lot of things to like here. There's a lot of talent. I would pick him up on a waiver wire. Um, I, I think there's a, a situation where you can start him, but I would say it's smoke in the sense that – you know, four weeks in a row as a wide receiver three or better, I cannot rely on the Jets passing game, whoever the quarterback is, um, to consistently start him. Um, so I, I, I think this is smoke, not fire, what we've seen in the last month, but it is telling for a bright future. If we're talking dynasty, we're saying, okay, all right, because the first half of the season, it was like, oh, maybe Elijah Moore was a was a whiff. Maybe he was a miss, and he has looked good. I think he's talented. If they can figure out the passing game and the quarterback situation in the long run, I think Elijah Moore is good, but for redraft, smoke. In it, We're getting Zach Wilson back this week, right? That's the, I believe, that's I believe the projection. he's back soon. Yeah. And, and even though like the, the, the super fun story of Mike White he oh, was, that was fun. He was kind of exposed here against the Buffalo Bills, but to uh, his credit, a lot of quarterbacks are not putting up points against Buffalo. He gets the Jets get Miami this week, and their defense has been absolutely on fire. I mean, all that production in the last couple of weeks it came with Mike White. So it's yeah, I I have to call this smoke for this year. I'm with you, Jason. Elijah Moore, long term. This we've now seen enough that. Yes, moving forward, Elijah Moore should develop into a very nice wide receiver. What's his ceiling? That remains to be seen. But uh, while I'm stashing him on my bench, I am definitely not playing him this week. So for that reason, smoke. 
Smoke. All right, that was Where There's Smoke, There's Fire, presented by our friends at Traeger Grills. Traditions, like the ones coming up, Thanksgiving, Christmas, they are better with Traeger. This Thanksgiving, add wood-fired flavor to your feast with a Traeger grill. Go to traeger.com slash footballers. We've got news and waivers coming. We want to thank the sponsors of today's podcast, including Head & Shoulders, their Scalp Shield technology, Never not working to give you up to 100% dandruff protection, even between washes. One of the most, uh, I think, illuminating segments on this show over the past year has been the never not working segment where we are taking deep dives into a number of categories. In fact, this week, I believe we're looking at two more positions with identifying league winners at those positions. Identifying what attributes what traits we're looking for and then a couple players who may fit that mold oh we're never not working that's man. right yeah yeah unlike how oh he's never working. barely working yeah that's a different tagline <laughs> barely working <laughs> um which is all the other shampoos compared to head and shoulders yeah that's right uh invisible shield of protection against dandruff itch and dryness get up to 100 percent dandruff protection that's never not working with head and shoulders scalp shield technology Available, Jason, at walmart.com. And let's thank Hello Tushy. Let's talk, oh. about, let's talk about the gift that keeps on giving. Yes. Okay. Because Hello Cleanliness. Tushy. Yes. Hello Tushy Bidet. It's going to clean your butt way better than wiping. There's just no other way to say it. It cuts toilet paper usage down by 80%. You're saving trees and all the thousands of gallons of water made to convert them into toilet paper. And it comes with a book full of poop jokes. <laughs> I mean, talk about a Christmas gift. Oh, my butt is in love. Listen, this is the easiest Does way. Does that replace our show? Uh, Wait a minute. Oh, man. We've, or should we? We've, our show should come with every purchase of a Hello Tushy bidet. Um, look, the, the bidet life, once you have it, you can't go backwards. If you would imagine, I, I've brought this up in the past, you get a piece of poop on you anywhere Mm -hmm. there's no chance you're just wiping it off with a paper towel and moving on why do you do this with your bottom you deserve better you deserve a bidet if you already have one then you know what you're getting everybody for christmas yep because you know you're improving their life give the gift of a clean bum to yourself or your loved ones this holiday season and get 10 percent off plus free shipping right now at hellotushy.com slash footballers that's hello tushy dot com slash footballers for ten percent off and free shipping. News and notes from around the league presented by Sleeper. Cordero Patterson, we talked about it yesterday, dealing with an ankle sprain. Doesn't sound optimistic that he will play in week eleven. We'll talk about Bruce Gallman in the waivers segment. <laughs> Bruce Wayne Gallman. Yeah. <laughs> Bruce Wayne yes. Gallman. Yes, yes, I went with the Bruce. Yeah, just that Bruce Gallman. <laughs> it didn't seem to make sense. <laughs> uh, I think there will be people asking about Mike Davis, so we'll have to talk about that too. Aaron Jones suffered a mild MCL sprain confirmed on tests and will miss one to two weeks. AJ Dillon's going to get the opportunity, and there'll be others involved in the backfield. No update. This sounded pessimistic to me when I was reading about it yesterday, but Pete Carroll said no update on Chris Carson. They'll revisit the situation Wednesday. So the neck is now, it's called the situation. And he missed the game despite returning to practice. It didn't sound good to me. This sounded more like one of those things that goes from he could be back to we could get a report he's done for the year. Well, they have 21 days from the day that they activated him. If he does not play in a game in that window, then he will be done for the season. Uh, we'll continue to monitor it. I, I mean, this is a 50-50 to me. I could see him uh, playing this week, uh, and, and but if he doesn't play this week, then it's it's uh, bad news. So Alex Collins will bring him his name up in the waivers as well. If you need five to six points. Oh, man, he's so good at getting me six points. All right, we have a report that Saquon Barkley trending well toward returning in week 11. Okay. So that's good news, unless you only have Devontae Booker. This should be a week even uh, further from the timeline expected because of the bye. Should be good to go. Yeah, and guess that sweet Tampa Bay matchup. (laughs) You never know. Uh, You saw Khalil Herbert go to town. Tell that to uh, uh, Gibson. Gibson, yeah. (laughs) yeah. You doing all right? Yeah. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury says it's going to be close. 
uh, with regards to Kyler Murray playing. Here's what we'll tell you from being out here in Arizona. Make plans. This is the show, right? Make plans to be without Kyler. Like there were people that freaked out last week. You were starting players you didn't want to start because you thought he'd be back. He, I don't think he plays. I really don't. That's The Cardinals have a bye week next week. Last year's end of season was derailed due to Kyler injury. They're not going to mess around. The Rams just lost. I honestly think that is That's one more. That's a huge deal. It's one more piece of the puzzle. The The Cardinals defense, they've played well in Seattle recently. I don't think Kyler's going to play. I know he wants to. But, I mean, do you guys disagree? Well, nope. I, I don't disagree at all from the standpoint of, as a fantasy manager, what you need to do is completely prepare to be without Kyler. Because if Kyler's active and he plays all week, whatever, great, then cut whatever quarterback you picked up and play Kyler if, if you feel so inclined. But your job right now is to find a quarterback to play. And we've got streamers on today's show. So Clyde Edwards-Alaire, pretty good chance to play in week 12. That's according to Andy Reid. Are you, or at week 11, I'm sorry. Are you guys immediately back in with Clyde, or are you going to give it a week and see how it shakes out? He, he's To me, I would throw him as a as a running back three at least. Like okay. uh, There's so many – I mean, people are scratching and clawing for running backs. Uh, yeah, I would I would play Clyde Edwards-Alaire. I don't see him as an RB1. He could come in and just be a 50-50 split, but he's certainly valuable enough for fantasy. We'll hit some start sit with him later in the week if we know he's playing. Tua is going to start in week 11 against the Jets. I mean, it's a right matchup to get him back and mm -hmm. has an opportunity. Possible streamer there. Ricky Seals Jones day to day with a hip injury, according oh, to Ron oh, Rivera. Oh. Was that an injured? <laughs> that was an injured. Oh, 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 that it sounds like your hip hurts. Yeah, it was a hip problem. Miles Sanders eligible to return from injured reserve. Nick mm -hmm. Sirianni, does he? know what he's doing maybe um, every week sounds like you know how fantasy managers we say we need to be like not hyper reactive right you need bigger mm -hmm. picture <laughs> every single week that goes by nick sirianni sounds like he is hyper reactive only reacting to what just happened that week last week it was jordan howard's going to be a fixture in the offense this week he realized miles sanders is coming back and i do, i don't know I, I don't know either. In this they've run the ball 68% of the time in neutral game scripts. That's the most in football over the last four weeks. It is it is a situation where there's upside. So either it's Miles Sanders, you could pick him up on the cheap if you think he just gets his job back, which he should. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, but Jordan Howard's there, man. <laughs> yeah, it. it's, it's going to be tough. I mean, Miles Sanders certainly should be picked up despite the fact that he didn't have any good fantasy relevant game since week two the future schedule for the philadelphia eagles is outstanding um we, we've obviously highlighted the um championship mm -hmm. and playoff schedule but it's pretty much from here on out uh they play the new orleans saints in week 11 and that's the only bad matchup all right any other news we need to get into nope all done yep all right that was today's news notes brought to you of course by Sleeper and the Sleeper app, the leader in breaking news alerts. Put me in, coach. All right, waiver time. Very important. There are flex spots to fill. There are some big teams going on the bye, like the Rams, where you have a lot of players that are relevant. Broncos also going on bye. Uh, Fewer players that are relevant. Yes, yes. I imagine that the bye weeks for Javante Williams and Melvin Gordon will be identical. They'll do the same exact things. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that is required. But we do welcome back the Bears, Bengals, Giants, and Texans. Let's talk about wide receiver options for your fantasy team. If you're looking for a spot start, if you're looking for somebody uh, heading towards the end of the year, is there a player that is of more concern both in redraft and dynasty than Cortland Sutton right now where – his relevance is he's had none. Yeah, it, it, those games, the small sample with him playing uh, alongside Jerry Judy, that sample is getting larger, and we have seen nothing <laughs> that says Sutton is is involved when Jerry Judy's on the field, at least the way that Teddy Bridgewater wants to play it. I mean, how many targets was it 
last week? Was three. It, was it three again? He had three targets, yeah. and this was a it's game. outrageous. You know, we talked about uh, the week prior when, you know, they were up 30 nothing on yeah. the Cowboys, didn't really need to throw the ball a lot. Nobody really had, um, you know, aw awesome uh, passing production. But against the Philadelphia Eagles, a decent matchup while they were down and needing to throw the ball, three total targets. I, I, I mean, at, at some point you've got to you got to say, this is the kind of thing where yeah, you got to you got to yeah, make you gotta move on. You you have to try to win this week. Cortland Sutton's probably not going to help you do that. Neither is Chase Claypool. Neither is Marvin Jones. Yeah, certainly not on the bye. Um, so I I'm not holding Sutton through the bye. So. Claypool, Marvin Jones, willing to let go of those guys? Yep. Redraft leagues? Yeah, yes. I was uh, just a quick dynasty note. Cortland Sutton is a, a free agent this year, so. Is he really? Yeah, so hopefully he. That'll be interesting. So hopefully he finds a different place to play football. Yeah, with a quarterback. He needs to go to like an Aaron Rodgers-style quarterback. I, I think he would. Was well, that better well. to stay in Denver then? Ooh. Oh, I see what you did there. Who knows? <laughs> I, I don't – has Corlin Sutton got the ability to go in and be somebody else's one? I th I believe he does, but – Is that how the, the market will view him? It's it's going to be tough. It'll probably be similar to like, you know, when Robinson was uh, hit the free agents uh, market and it was just like, okay, you're the Bears are the ones who are giving, giving you the money. I wonder if they franchise him. I doubt it. Okay. Uh so main waiver wire pickups, these are some guys that are mostly rostered but worth paying attention to. Kenny Galladay and Kadarius Toney, uh, both players coming back off the bye. I'm interested in kicking the tires on both of these players. I think that you could have opportunities for, uh, I guess, a, a solidified role for both the both of these guys towards the end of the year. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I I do agree. I think coming off of the buy, finally getting some of their assets healthy, including Saquon Barkley, you have an opportunity to see what the Giants' offense can do. Um, Kadarius Tony has looked like the more electric player, but I'm still not convinced that he is going to um, be put into you know the the that he's going to play enough snaps when the wide receiver core is completely healthy. I would lean towards Kenny Galladay, even though he's done very little this year. He's been injured the whole season. Uh, he played 55% of snaps. Oh. 55! Um, which, ironically, Kadarius Tony played. Oh, no. Don't do it. Yeah. 55! <laughs> so they both played the same amount of snaps. But Wait, so did Rashad Bateman. Oh, Rash how many? Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Um, they did all play 55% of the snaps. But, yeah, I would I would prioritize Kenny Galladay over Kadarius Tony. Now, Galladay's rostered in most leagues, but it was the bye week. I think there will be – There's a chance. Uh, you know, at least quarter leagues out there where he is available. Look out for Rashad Bateman. I think it's going to be a strong week for him this week. If he's out there on your roster, eight targets last week, five for 52, looks great. Mm -hmm. uh, targeted on 20% of his routes when he's been out there. And we – I mean, I don't think we planned it. But you start to look at the storylines that we're talking about with rookie wide receivers, what Jason just said about them coming on in the back half of the year. You know, you have Devontae Smith, you have Elijah Moore, now you have Rashad Bateman who, you know, out, outside of – you look at Dynasty, right? right? Jamar Chase is at the tippy top, yes. right? But then you look at Devontae Smith and Rashad Bateman, they're the next two guys, right? I mean, th those are the two most – that you're yeah, most excited about. Yeah, but yeah, I would – Yes, I'd put them in that order. Uh, other options at the wide receiver position. If you're looking for spot starts or some some longevity at the position, the waiver wire is rough this week. Yeah, there's there's some there's some great running backs if they're available on your waivers. Otherwise, we're we're getting a little dirtier. I think the two names that I'm looking at. Did you mean wide receivers? Uh, no, I, I was oh, talking okay. about. The, the, I'm saying as a total, the waiver wire is very rough this week. Outside of a couple of. People probably rostered at running back, but could be big game changers like A.J. Dillon. Uh, but at wide receiver, if I need a spot start, there's two names. Neither are exciting, but I think they could have good weeks. It's Donovan Peoples-Jones and Jamal Agnew. Those are the two okay. where if you're talking about guys that are widely available, not um, obviously I would I would much rather Bateman or Tony or uh, Kenny Galladay, but those two players I think have decent enough matchups, have been involved – uh, enough recently where if I've got to pick someone up and start them, 
because, oh, yuck, I've got injuries or bye weeks or whatever. Right. Are you willing to start Donovan Peoples-Jones or Jamal Agnew? Yes, uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones. I saw a note that in the matchup against the Patriots, they were putting Jackson uh, on Donovan Peoples-Jones. And this, like the the the, uh, the analyst was noting, like this is a shift of the of team defenses viewing Donovan Peoples-Jones as the number one guy for the Cleveland Browns. And it doesn't seem like a good thing. Well, I, it's yeah. that seems like a, he's a default number one, but maybe he can't beat that coverage. Maybe, but maybe. Detroit, yeah, he gets the match against Detroit. Yeah, put put their number one and number two on him. <laughs> that's like that's like most teams four and five. I'm pretty nervous about starting him and Agnew. Okay, so then off of this list, uh, which we saw Agnew with the speed, he, he had five targets and no catches, but he had the huge rushing touchdown. Of this getting down in the dirt, who are you interested in actually picking up and playing? If Darnell Mooney is out there after the bye week, I'd be willing to see if this offense is going to make a jump over the back half of the year. Justin Fields turned in his most impressive performance of the season against Pittsburgh. David Montgomery is back into the fold. And it does seem like Justin Fields has a thing for Darnell Mooney. It's like Yes, he does. That's he he's hyper targeted him. He had six targets, a couple touchdowns in this past game. If he's out there, I'm interested in Darnell Mooney. And Baltimore has been giving up big plays, and that's Darnell Mooney's category of choice. Uh, you know, outside of him, it it is rough. Uh, if you like Van Jefferson, or do you like Michael Gallup more? Well, Van, Van Jefferson, Jefferson going on to buy. Yeah. Um, obviously, if you need a start, then he's out. Um, I do think Van Jefferson is going to be okay rest of season uh, I he's not an auto drop to me so he could be a, a pickup on the waiver wire obviously if if you need a start Michael Gallup at Kansas City is helpful right Kansas City their offense was back hopefully the, I mean this game goodness gracious the Cowboys and the Chiefs please please don't disappoint us we just want 100 <laughs> points that's all we want 100 points um no less no more uh, I don't want to be greedy here, but that that has the potential to be an outstanding game where Gallup could you you could do worse than putting in a, even a third option uh, against the Chiefs. I would be willing to chase Marcus Johnson's performance. Yeah, he was a name I wanted to bring up. He gets, over Agnew, he, wide receiver for the Titans. He gets uh, the matchup with the Houston Texans, yes. and if you look over the last three weeks, that so you have last week Julio was out, and then two weeks ago Julio was out. Marcus Johnson was the one who picked up the slack, and like you can't, everything can't be AJ Brown. Someone else is going to be highlighted in this passing attack. Five for a hundred uh, this past week, and against the Saints, which that's a nice line against the uh, the New Orleans secondary, included a big play of a of a, a slant route that turned into a huge yak opportunity, and the running backs for the Titans. It, <laughs> They they wanted to keep the same offense, but when you lose Derrick Henry, you cannot. So I think that Marcus Johnson is very interesting as a spot start. Worth mentioning that Ray Ray McLeod played 70% of snaps, had 12 targets, 9 catches. The Steelers may or may not be with Big Ben this right. week. Yeah, if Big Ben is back, then Ray Ray McLeod is meaningless, but you, you see this sometimes. Because really? we think... hadn't seen the non-Claypool. Like, Claypool got knocked out, right. so... I mean, how is he? He's still going to play seventy percent of snaps. Yeah, I mean, he'll be out there. I guess I just I assume Deontay Johnson is going to be incredibly hyper targeted. And Deontay Johnson was basically Deontay Johnson was Ray Ray McLeod for Mason Rudolph, and I I can't see he that. Still saw thirteen targets. So um, he, Deontay saw thirteen, and Ray Ray saw twelve. Yeah, I mean, may, maybe it gets better with Big Ben, um, but I. It's just one of those things where you you look at. It was it the quarterback shift or was it the injury to Claypool? Um, and I think it was more the backup quarterback coming in, having practice with the backup wide receiver. We've seen that happen in the past, but it, there's certainly the 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 chance that it was just he's playing the Claypool snaps and he gets even better with Big Ben. So you can you can look his way. Um, I would only want to start him without Big Ben personally. Put the Saints wide receivers in order. They play Philly this week. Last week, you had Marquez Callaway with the touchdown. You had Deontay Harris, three for 84. You had Traquan Smith with the touchdown. 
Uh, I don't like any of them this week against Philly, who's number four against wide receivers, but I would put him Traquan first because of snaps and targets, then Callaway Harris. Yeah, I suppose I'll just let the snaps dictate it. The, Deontay Harris, is he's a very interesting player, and that's disappointing he wasn't on the field a bit more, but I, I guess it's just it's really just Traquan. Running back candidates uh, to drop from your team. Are you cutting bait on Adrian Peterson and Jeremy, McN Jeremy McNichols? I I think you can if one of these other players is out there and you need to pick up and start them this week. Yeah, only if you can upgrade from them to... Would you drop either one for Deonta Foreman? Yes. So if you if you I, had made the run to get Peterson or McNichols... Yes. And Deontay Foreman is out there, was 11 for 30, I mean... Deontay Foreman is oh. only impressive relative to yeah, it's it's all disgusting. Peterson and McNichols it's and their, their lack of production. It's their own Titans ecosystem of the running backs. So we're not comparing them to external sources. But Deontay Foreman by far looks like the best option, and he looked like it in the first week without Henry. That turned into more snaps and more opportun opportunities for Foreman, and I I expect that. To continue because he's just he's the best option that they have. Yeah, I, I would put Foreman up front. I thought you I thought you said for Devonta Freeman, and that one was. Oh, I would take Freeman, assuming that. Well, we don't know what's Latavius going on with Latavius out, Murray. Yeah. I, I imagine when Latavius Murray's back, he's the starter because he was probably when he left. It's yeah. hard. Uh, would you cut Chase Edmonds? No, he's just on three week IR. Yeah, I mean, would you cut Alex Collins? No, no. Would you cut Jeff Wilson? No, no. Jeff Wilson was there, involved, and I think will have even better games going forward. All right. Obviously, target A.J. Dillon. Uh, if he's out there, it's, somehow. It, spend it all. Yeah, say at this point in the season, for it's a short-term injury as far as we know for, for Aaron Jones, one to two weeks. I would project the two weeks, just the Green Bay Packers, they hold their guys out until they're really ready to go. But two weeks of AJ Dillon, Minnesota, the Rams, and then there's the bye week. Do you, at this point, do you go everything, go yeah. all in on AJ? Yeah, Dillon? I, I would, I would make sure I get him. I would spend my top priority because if you get two weeks of a dominant running back, and that's what I expect. I expect him to be a top ten, at least top fifteen running back when he's got, um, you know, he won't have a hundred percent of the workload, um, but he will be the guy. And, um, yeah, I, w I would be willing to do that for the chance of buying two victories to ensure playoff opportunity. And he is not a player that expires on the return of Aaron Jones, Correct. which is something valuable in the waiver wire where you, like you said, you know, like a Devonta Freeman probably disappears for the most part with the return of Murray. Uh, what do we do? Let's talk about this for oh, a second. No. With the backfield – in New England. Ramondre Stevenson is only 39% rostered, went 20 for 102 last week, five targets. Oh, gosh. He played 55% <laughs> of snaps. And he's been impressive. Uh, he looks very versatile in a, in a run-first offense. The team is great. The defense in New England is playing out of their minds right now. And guess what? They're going to do that again on Thursday. Now, we don't know. Yet, unless Brooks has breaking news for us on the return of D, uh, of Damian Harris, but y this is a Thursday game. This decision has to get made right here, right now, and you're going to have to make a decision going into the game. What do you do with this backfield? I refer to the flow charts <laughs> more, more than likely the one we drew up last week, where. If Harris is out, then Stevenson is an absolute smash play. Like his peripherals of how much work he actually saw, we haven't seen. Like Damian Harris hadn't, he hit those running back numbers week one and week two as far as his market share of the attempts. That's that's how outrageous the the workload was here for Stevenson in week ten. If Harris is back, is he still I, worth playing? I, Stevenson, yeah. Oh, he he should have had three touchdowns he, last week. Like it's full desperation for me to flex Stevenson if Harris is back. Yeah, I I would I would wait. I would bench him if Harris is back, because for here's the thing. I think that it should clearly. 
be Harris and Ramondre as the one-two punch. And what I think is completely irrelevant. It's what Bill Belichick thinks. And if Ramondre kind of shares that skill set and that skill set goes to Harris on first and second down and he'd rather get Bolden in there for third, you could see Ramondre Stevenson just really not part of the game plan. Um, he should be because he's probably their most talented running back. Um, but if Harris is back, I'm going to bench Ramondre Stevenson, see what happens, and avoid um, you know, getting – the potential for two carries and uh, or or you know not active, but because of the Thursday matchup the, and the way that concussions work, there is there is a chance that Harris doesn't make it back for the game. Well, you so so that is a very nuanced situation for fantasy players because you have to spend on Ramondre, Fab waiver priority. Is he worth it? He yes he he is worth it. I, I believe he's, he's worth, worth it. the potential. He's worth the potential. Um, he would be behind AJ Dillon for me. Um, is he, he second on the list? He's second on my personal list because I think that because of the short week, there's a good chance he's the starter. And if he's the starter, goodness gracious, against yeah. Atlanta, you 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 just saw what's going to happen. He's going to dominate. We talked about that with AJ Dillon. It's worth having a week or two of dominance. And and there is. It, if it's so nice that it's a Thursday game because it ups his likelihood that the concussion protocol is not fulfilled, um, you know, a shorter timeline for uh, recovery for Harris. If Ramondre Stevenson comes out and dominates again, now two games in a row of domination, Harris comes back. It's 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 more likely that he has just you know earned his way into the offense versus one performance. Are you the same on the priority if later today? Practice report comes out, and uh, Damien is limited. If like he's, it's not just he's out. If, it's oh, he's back to limited. Right. No. If if he's out in pads, if he if he's practicing in in pads, then certainly not. Um, okay. Check your news later this afternoon to see what the expectation is for Harris. If it's a complete question mark and they're just not sure yet, which is what I expect, then that's that's where I really do like Ramondre. All right. Uh, the other side of the ball in the Thursday game is Cordero Patterson's absence and then Wayne Gallman, who saw 15 carries for 55 yards last week. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm Ooh, sorry, everybody. Man. It's a little strong. It's America not, loves it. It's not on us. It's on these players and these coaches. Yeah, you're right. And, and you also have Mike Davis. And so... You know, it's not going to be all Wayne Gallman. They they certainly moved away from Mike Davis last week, but you have to look at the game script too. They were what forty three to three in that game, mm -hmm. so you don't know how much of that was. We're just kind of done here. Wayne's going to get the last. Go run out the clock, Wayne. Yeah. So so do you like do you do zero dollar bids on these guys? Do you? I think that's, you, can you flex Wayne Gallman on on Thursday against I, New England? No. I think I think you can. I think you can chase the volume. I don't, and the reason why is because I'm not sure that the volume's going to be there. We don't know that this was a look. Gallman's better. We're gonna Mike Davis. You've been terrible. We're finally moving on, or the game's out of hand. Let's we just lost Cordero. Let's I mean, protect Josh Mike Davis snaps. and and put in Gallman. And so there's a chance here that Gallman isn't even you're not chasing anything. You're just, you're Mike Davis is the starter. And then when you combine that with the fact that you're playing against the New England Patriots who are you know a, a very very good defense. The only production that I see coming outside of falling in an end zone, which I don't anticipate that happening easily against this defense, is receptions. And Mike Davis has been involved in the receiving game throughout the course of the season. So if I'm going to play one of them, it's gross. It's the worst of the two running backs. But for fantasy purposes, I'm probably putting in Mike Davis in hopes that he gets six or seven receptions and then ends with like nine points somehow in a full it is, PPR. It is a good point that who, whoever it is, whoever is the primary running back is likely to see five-plus targets because of the the lack of weapons and how much Cordero was being used in the passing game. They have so nobody. They, that's, they have nobody. So, I mean, it's super sketchy, but I think you could take a shot and you, you could come out with four or more receptions for at least one of these they're, running they're backs. They're going to get destroyed, right? I, I, I can't see how they don't get destroyed because – 
all the all the narrative of Bill Belichick takes out your number one option. You know, we we say that a lot, but there is absolute hardcore data on that. It's just a fact. He does, and their number one option is clear as day. It's Kyle Pitts. So they're gonna they're gonna do everything to take him out of the the offense. In which case, you're telling me that Russell Gage and Zacchaeus they've got to beat the Patriots defense with Mike Davis. Like I don't. You guys see ready that. to forty to forty to nothing? Falcons win on Thursday. You ready? <laughs> yeah, my that's body what the is NFL ready. is doing right now. It has yes. I just don't. I don't see how they get it done. If you uh, another reminder for players out there, just be smart. On Sunday morning, if you have room to stash somebody, you can throw. This is a great week for it. Too. A Samaje P. Ryan on your bench, a Sony Michelle, a Chuba Hubbard. I did this last week just in case something happened to. Christian McCaffrey. You have Alexander Madison that might be out there. So stash alert. Yeah, absolutely. The you know, other than AJ Dillon and maybe Ramondre's in that group, it's very possible your team just doesn't need a running back this week. And so we're all these gross options. You're just you're sitting up in your castle cackling at all of us, all of us peons who are scrambling to the waiver wire because we have to play these guys. If you aren't there then your bench spot should be taking a flyer on mm -hmm. one of these high-value backups because that's just in case, man. It happens every week. I would even throw, you know, if some of those guys are going, I'd even throw an Eno Benjamin. Yes. Just because if Connor got knocked out, yes. Eno will start for like two weeks. So uh, tight ends. Let's look at some options. To me, Dan Arnold stands out as the far and away best yep. pickup at the tight end position. Yep. He's not. He hasn't been getting the respect he deserves, but he was five for sixty-seven last week. Targeted a ton, tons of routes, and only thirty-four percent roster. Yeah. The postman delivered. Now it took a while. The mail was delayed. With it looked like no mail on Sunday for the first half. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I mean, that five for sixty-seven, I think, was almost all in the entire second half. Yeah, it, it was close. If it wasn't entirely there, he uh, projects to be their number one receiver um and so that's what you're looking for you can get him he's only rostering 34 percent of leagues he's he's available um and he would be the number one pickup but there are two other guys that are available that i think are really great options um hunter henry he's rostered in most leagues now but he's still available in 30 percent of leagues do you know that hunter henry is the tight end three on the season <laughs> Because he, he catches he, two passes a week, but they're all touchdowns. They're all t all he does is t catch touchdowns. And the thing is, is against Atlanta, like John seven still touchdowns hurt. in seven weeks. I mean, That's at some deep. point, you just keep betting on <laughs> him to catch a touchdown. So he's available, and of course, the Muth. I know that he lost or the lost the win for the Steelers, but he did that with nine targets again. They were Mason Rudolph targets, so yuck. But <laughs> he is um, clearly a big part of the receiving game. Put those guys in order. Uh, Dan Arnold, Pat Fryermuth, Hunter Henry. Really? Okay, Mike? I agree with that. All right. So uh, the Muth could be it could be better if Big Ben's back. Agreed. Do you guys make anything of Gerald Everett having eight targets uh, against Green Bay? Not really. I, I think Russ was not himself. Whatever he says. It, and it wasn't just like, oh, I'm scramble, scramble. Save me, Gerald Everett. It was, no, he was looking for Gerald Everett. Yeah. I, Arizona's been locked down against tight ends lately. That's his it next explains matchup. the shutout. <laughs> right, yes. <laughs> yeah, they, they hyper-targeted Gerald Everett and did not move the ball. It felt like, it, honestly, it felt like they kind of ran through the air with him. Do you know what I mean? Sure. There's yeah, a yeah. lot of those underneath it was, they little, were short. and it was okay. We're not going to hand the ball to Collins on this play. We're going to throw it to Everett and see what happens. Uh, I, I I guess I would need I need like two weeks of this. Sure. To, to do anything, I'd rather play Conklin, Tyler Conklin. If yes. you need an emergency start at tight end, he's he's always there for you. He's mm -hmm. like just waiting to yeah. be put into a lineup. He's a safety net. Yeah. Defensively. Uh, Tennessee plays Houston. Tennessee's defense has been playing great. I don't see how you're going to go wrong with the Tennessee D. They're my number one pickup. That being said, I am playing the Patriots over Tennessee. I have both on my roster. I am not benching a, sure. a, a defense like New England against Atlanta. But Atlanta, I think, is uh, second in terms of the best 
team to play against as a defense to Houston. Houston yeah. is number one. That's the, those those are both great. Um, but Tennessee is rostered in most leagues. The 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 half, one yeah. half the, the or yes half half of the leagues. Um, the one that is widely available that I think is a smash play is the Miami Dolphins. Agreed. They have been they've come. Look, they came into this year, and we all assumed that Miami had a great defense. They've got good defensive pieces, and they just stunk. I mean, they were one that you wanted to target, but these they, they have figured it out. Uh, it's back-to-back -back weeks with really good performances for them, and they get the Jets. So I'm all about starting the Dolphins. I'm not worried there. One thing I want to mention, I don't think the Patriots actually practiced today. Um, it was estimated that it was a DNP with concussion, but I don't think they okay. practiced because yeah, they, yeah, they played Sunday, they play on Thursday. But that sense. estimate is still important. That estimate is a DNP. Yes. So uh, you don't, you're not going to get more information. So just circling back to the Ramondre decision, it stands it's as Tuesday. So he'd have to get back to practice, then back to pads. It's, it's just a really – I don't know if he'll get to pads, but it's pads, exactly. but – and I think the do yeah. not practice we were seeing was from yesterday. Oh, okay. like estimated Monday report. Oh, oh you're right. Okay. It was Monday. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, watch for that today. If it's another estimated DNP or whatever it is because the Thursday schedule is crazy. Uh, can I just be transparent here? This is the worst because like, there's a human being. Like Damian yeah. Harris has a concussion. Yep. And he's awesome. Yeah. And I want him to be healthy. But I'm sitting here with Ramondre Stevenson, and I'm going, You're bad oh, man. my gosh, what if he's alone again against Atlanta? Just like, shouldn't You're, we be careful with, with the brain injuries? Absolutely. We should be very careful. You should take your time. Uh, I am very happy that I traded Brandon Ayuk live on the show for Ramondre Stevenson last week. That worked it did out. work out, yes. Uh, Ayuk only four points last night. So. Yep. Unfortunate. Um, other options you can throw out there. San Francisco's defense looked great last night. They played Jacksonville. You can play them. The Browns bounce back against Detroit. That that should work out. It should, yes. And then uh, you could look at the Chargers. The Chargers will potentially be playing a Pittsburgh team that just tied the Lions. And Mason Rudolph could be starting. So the Chargers may be the sneakiest, oh, lowest yeah. rostered play out there. If Big Ben is out, I mean, I always want to – I almost wanted to start Detroit. Um, because if you can play against Mason Rudolph, heck yeah. Oh, yeah, you take it. Man, we really don't like him. I can't <laughs> stand Mason Rudolph. He's made me love Dwayne Haskins. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Give me Dwayne Haskins. That's saying something. Oh, big time. Full stream ahead. Well, my streaming candidate comes with a big old gulp because Whoa. uh oh my goodness what are you doing i know i know all right well he's not going to be a last second pivot option for your kyler murray let me put it that way so mac jones does not fit that role but he's my stream of the week thursday night atlanta atlanta is they're allowing the second highest opponent passer rating uh that's a category that mac jones just won this past week uh, he's playing outstanding football uh, the patriots are great on the road and like you look at Atlanta the past four weeks. This was an Atlanta team that gave up a number one overall performance to Tua. This is an op. You are guaranteed 20 points with Mac Jones. That's what I'm telling you. Now your variance may be 20 to 24. But if you're going to have an explosive week, it can come against Atlanta and you're not going to get burnt by him. He's going to dismantle them. Yeah. So I'm, I, I'm, it's scary, but I'm going to do it. I like it. I, I think the worry is just to get around the goal line and Ramondre. Uh, scores all the touchdowns on the ground. Excuse and, uh, me, Hunter Henry has something to say about that. Oh, he certainly, does. certainly. Um, I, I, I do, I do like that. And regarding the uh, the pass rating, I think the stat that I saw was uh, of all the because there's a lot of rookie quarterbacks this year. Um, rookie quarterbacks with over a hundred passer rating. Um, so far, Mac Jones is leading with five so far this year, mm. and no one else has one. <laughs> so uh, wow. he, he is clearly the best. My start comes with another little gulp here. It's Cam Newton. You're what? This Look, is, this is an incredible play. Riverboat run, revenge game against the Washington football team. Oh, I don't team. care about that part uh, at all. They they have allowed 22 passing touchdowns, at second most in the NFL. There is no Chase Young. The matchup is good, and obviously, here's the nice thing: Cam is going to run the ball. He can rush touchdowns. We saw it this last week in his um, first touch back in the NFL. And um, when you listen to Matt Rule talk, 
He says, you know, they don't want a little bit of Cam. They want all of what Cam does. They want full Cam Newton style play. So I think they're going to run a lot. And if if they allow him to get 40, 50 rushing yards, you're going to be fine um, with huge upside here. Cam Newton was was great for fantasy last year. He was not necessarily great on the football field, but uh, it, it fell apart in the last month of the season last year. But up until that point, he was frequently a top 12 quarterback and he was like you're like oh well can cam newton pass anymore the patriots last year the wide receiver core that they had that cam newton was the quarterback for they completely they threw so much money at the wide receiver position to replace everybody mm -hmm. and, and those were the guys that cam had to play with last year and now he has dj moore in and robbie anderson so yeah, I'm, look look who mac jones is throwing the ball like, to Pick up Cam Newton. I, I'm 100% for this, and he could be a, a long-term situation or a long-time starter. I'm streaming Tua. Uh, he is starting officially, and he is playing the New York Jets. They are allowing the most 20-plus yard passing plays. They are a bad defense. They're allowing 33 points per game. That is the most in the NFL. And Tua has Tua's been low-key good for fantasy football. And on top of that, my, the Miami Dolphins are just – they are throwing the ball – so often, like they're frequently in the top ten passing attempts on on the week. So I think this is a very good situation that Tua you can just pick him up off the waiver wire and throw him in. All right, lots to process and think about. Good luck on your waiver wires. We want to thank Traeger Grills for supporting the show, of course, because traditions. Well, they're better with Traeger. Most things are better with Traeger, mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, we are doing a brisket on our Traeger for our Thanksgiving. Hopefully beginning a new tradition of brisket for Thanksgiving. Was that because brisket is superior to the normal Thanksgiving options? Yes. Are you just afraid to say the word turkey out loud? But I, uh, look, I don't want I know people love it. We're doing both. We're not just doing brisket. Okay. We're doing both. You do it like a real small turkey. We want uh, I just don't we're doing both. They have We're the, smoking them. The Traeger started uh, selling provision boxes. You can get them on on their website where you can get the brisket, yep. or ribs or turkey. It's 12 great. pound brisket. Oh yeah. I'm going to make it. Um and uh look your ki your kitchen's not filled with pots and pans and all that. You're, you're smoking outside on the Traeger. That's true. This Thanksgiving add wood-fired flavor to your feast with a Traeger grill. Go to traeger.com/footballers and check it out. And we want to thank Pristine Auction as well. Because they're pristine, awesome. They are fantastic. Being auctioned right now, I see a George Kittle signed jersey for $52. That ends tonight. A Najee Harris signed mini helmet for $72 bucks ends tonight. Uh, pristine auction is awesome. Get some for yourself. Get some for Christmas gifts. And when you sign up, use our registration code BALLERS. You will get a $10 credit. So it's even cheaper. Unbelievable. All right. As I said, good luck on the waiver wire. And we'll be back with you tomorrow on another fantastic episode of the podcast. <laughs> yes, that is correct. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.